Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many more. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy, and hail to you all. All right, folks. Hail, hail, hail. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go again. It's like a white snake song, right? Here we go again on our own, baby. Um. So thank you guys for uh, tuning back in again. As you can tell, my voice has returned to a bit more of its uh, former luster or lack thereof. Uh, not quite as raspy, not quite as labored as, uh, as it was last week. And I uh, am, am happy to, you know, report that the um, a malady, <clears throat> I guess you could say, the malady, the, the injury of, of uh, sickness and all that kind of stuff um, was nothing more for me and my wife than just a seemingly at least um, cold, you know, upper respiratory inconvenience. Uh, we both tested negative for COVID, Omicron, whatever. Um, some of the family obviously is still uh, recovering from the effects of it. My uh, both my father-in-law and mother-in-law. Uh, but the good thing is that uh, my father-in-law, you know, he's uh, in his 70s and um, is, is feeling fine. You know, he, he's not, he's not uh, in, in a lot of discomfort or a lot of, you know, pain or whatever. He's, he sounds better than he did last week. He, he's moving around a bit better. So I guess right now, you know, it's just a point um, or just a matter really of, uh, retesting seeing if they've got it still uh my mother-in-law you know still feels a little under the weather but um seems to have been the worst of it you know no fevers no major major um impact but uh you know just figured i'd start off this week's podcast by giving you guys an update on the thing that we were talking about last week and just let you know that um you know everybody that we have regular dealings with seems to be you know, on the mend. And that seems to be, you know, the trend um, on this variant, at least people that are catching it, you know, it's, it's just a really bad cold um, or so it seems, but um, anyway, great to report on that, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, so we're going to be uh, talking this week. Had a little, had a little, uh, I say, not say a little, but had some you know, tragedy strike actually today. Um, and we've had some tragedy strike actually for the first couple of weeks, first few weeks. Here we are now going into the second week of January uh, or finishing up the second week of January, you know, we're, depending on when you're catching this. And uh, we've already seen and, and heard from a lot of um, things that are, I say things we're, we're you know, hearing a lot about the people passing a lot of celebrity deaths, you know, Betty, Betty White <clears throat> bowed out 
um, for her curtain call right before, you know, uh, the New Year struck on New Year's Eve, if I remember right now, uh, just a few days ago. Um, I think it was uh, end of, end towards the end of end of last week. I think I heard about Sydney Poitier. You know, ninety something years old. Um, he just passed. And then the most recent one that I can think of that you know probably most everybody's impacted by in some way or at least you know feels worst about right is 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 Bob Saget man. Old uh, old Bob Saget, sixty five years old man. Oh! Yeah, Bob Saget, <laughs> man. Oh, used to watch Full House as a kid growing up. Um, America's Funniest Home Videos, you know. And then uh, <laughs> didn't realize, I guess, until you know much later on, um, as I got older and stuff, on on just how much of a of a comic this guy was, you know. That 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 feature that he had in half baked half baked was. Uh, Man, that was uh, that was like the first time that I can recall seeing you know Danny <laughs> from Full House, right? Just acting like out of cows. Like, what? That's the same guy, you know? S S sucking D for crack, man. You know, <laughs> it's, can't put it any other way. But uh, yeah, I was like, what? But turns out he had a pretty dark sense of humor. Um, and you look in some of his other comedic roles and comedic acts and, and, and performances and stuff like that, and you can see just how much of a of a interesting guy that he really was. So, so you know, tragedy is is striking early this year. And it almost seems like we 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 see this happening um, like every at the beginning of every year, it seems, you know, at the beginning of every um, turn of, of, a, of a new year, when the, when the leaf turns, right, we, we, it's like, oh, man, you know, who are we going to see that uh, kicks, kicks the bucket first? And, you know, it's kind of the name of the game, though, not, um, you know, people get old, man, and, and we all do, and it's, what, are, what does it say, the, uh, the hour of our fate is set and none can escape it. Something along those lines, you know? So we're just, uh, we're, we're riding along on this journey in this thing called life, man. And we're, we're just on our way to get there. Um, and it, and it, and it's up to us. It's up to us individually. It's up to us, um, in our own respective lives to, you know, what condition do we want to arrive in? when we uh, reach the end of the road, as it were, or the, or the, the change of, of, uh, the change of, of directions. It's not really the end of a road. It's, 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 it's in end. It's, it's a transition. You know, it's like, we're, we're stopping off at this point. We're getting off on an exit and we're going uh, to another direction. And then some of these folks, you know, just cause they're, you know, public figures, celebrities, whatever in the public eye, you know, they, they, they get a little bit more, um, <clears throat> attention put on them a little bit more of the spotlight put on them because of obvious things but um, we're all going to get there and at the end of it all none of us are different in that aspect so um, uh, in that in that light you know um, and I say you know tragedy has struck and all that it is a tragedy it, it's it's a, it's a loss you know because we we People that that maybe uh, you know we're, we're we're much more closer friends and family to the people that 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 die, the people that have uh, passed on, right? They're affected the most. Um, and we had something happen recently in our tribe. Um, matter of fact, at the time of this uh, podcast being aired for the YouTube channel members, once and one again, say a special thank you and a shout out to the YouTube channel members that catch this before the Thursday premiere. Um, so hail and, and then thank you to you guys and gals out here that, um, you know, support the channel in that way. But, uh, so, um, Monday, which is, uh, 
was this now? I guess the uh, the tenth. Uh, our tribe had a loss felt, and you know I'm gonna I'm gonna go somewhere. I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe say some things that that may um, I don't wanna say like rub people the wrong way, but maybe like oh come on, give me a break, right? I'm talking about the death of a house pet, which on the very surface level seems. Um, like, you know, why are we talking about the, the death of a house pet? I'm going to get into a little bit of like the whole, um, how much this, this animal is, this pet, this, uh, philia, I feel like there was, there was a philia inhabiting this, this animal. Um, I go these philia, um, and that, and that, and that host has now been displaced from, from that part of the self of, of my go these self. Now we're going to talk during this podcast about what I mean by the philia. Um, but suffice it to say, um, little kitty, we'll just call her little kitty, um, expired. Her life expired today. Her physical life expired today. Um, after a short yet steady, right. Um, dissension into poor health. Um, talking about things where, you know, she was unable to get around, move around as, as freely and as easily as she used to be able to her, um, her, her bowel continency was not as strong, right? So she couldn't control her bowels as easily. Just the, 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 the telltale signs, you know, of an animal that is starting to reach the end of its physical life. And, um, the guy, you know, to give you all just like a background story about, um, about her, about little kitty, you know, this animal, she, uh, she's been a part of my Gobi's life for, I want to say <clears throat> the biggest part of 15 years or she's about 15 years old. And when she, uh, came into his life, um, was near and around or at the, the vey, what we call our vey now, um, our sacred space on his, on my Gobi's old familial lands. Right. So whenever we have a, a, a tribe gathering of, of religious uh, importance, such as, you know, um, Seeger bloat in the, in the spring slash summer or winter nights um, at the opposite end of the year um, and any other sort of major you know, ritual religious experience. A lot of that is done outside in the woods at Arve and uh, little kitty had um, made her appearance um, known if it wasn't there, if it wasn't at that particular vey, it was at another adjacent. It was, it was at, it was around some sacred gathering, some sacred space, somewhere that was, you know, marked off as um, sacred or hallowed ground, that sort of thing, a grove, whatever. I want to say it was at the same place that we all gather at now. Um, my go these watching or whatever, you know, if I'm wrong, then correct me. But uh, anyway, ever since then, you know, and 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 how much she's been involved in his life has, has been like since day one there and um yeah like anytime he did anything ritually um whether it was in his house apartment whatever you know anytime that he would um start something like that she was always there like she was always a part of it she was always nearby not by his desire or 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 effort to to make her part of it she just made herself present you know um and and has for for many many years and so um when her health began to decline very very rapidly but in a in, you know in a slow and st I say rapidly it wasn't like an overnight thing but it, it's probably i think at this time probably within the last, <clears throat> within the last week or so uh it's just been that, you know, slow and steady decline. But, but, you know, as, as, as that's happened and as, and as he was, uh, you know, observing her behaviors and mannerisms and trying to help her out as best he could and, you know, making sure she felt loved, you know, you reach a point where you determine, all right, is this something that we can uh, extend their life comfortably or is it time to, allow them to peacefully, you know, transition and pass on, knowing that they're loved, 
without as much pain and suffering as possible, you know? And today was that day. Today on the 10th, um, at, uh, I want to say it was 1021 Central Time, 1021 AM, uh, was when, you know, she, she left this realm. And uh, because of the spiritual connection, because of that philia um, aspect between her and um, my Gothi, it's like a loss for the tribe, you know, uh, because this is, a, this is someone, and I use that term correctly, this is someone, not something, not just a thing, but a, a living, breathing representation of life, someone has departed our physical plane, our profane plane to move on into the spiritual plane. And um, it's an interesting time to think about things like this. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm using the, uh, you know, um, experiences of loss recently that we see at the beginning of a new year right that, that are visible to the world the, the the deaths of celebrities public figures and that sort of thing we've felt loss personally and i'm sure that people listening and watching today have all felt loss personally themselves as well within a relatively short period of time from this past year up to now you know and we're coming into um here in a few days the yuletide celebration for our tribe where we'll be celebrating our yule um close to around the time of the of the full moon um our, our yule celebration will be uh, two days prior to the to the to the actual full moon but because of when it falls during a weekday and and everyone's schedule right we're we're, we're having our celebration a couple of days prior so we're getting into that mindset we're getting into that we're preparing ourselves, excuse me, we're preparing ourselves for, for all of that sort of activity where we'll be having, holding bloat to the gods, where we'll be, you know, gifting to the gods um, in anticipation and in hopes of their blessings uh, on us for our tribe, for our people, for um, our loved ones throughout the coming year. And, um, we do so uh, as well with our feasting, with our gift exchange, uh, you know, with the, with the gifting cycle. We exchange in that gifting cycle with the gods as well as with us, our people, our folk. We exchange gifts at Yule. We have and hold symbol where we, you know, allow for the speaking over the horn or over the well uh, for our toasts and boasts and any oaths that are given are the most powerful uh, when given uh, around Yule. So, you know, it's a very important time of year uh, for us and our tribe and, and for a lot of people, right? Anytime that there's a Yuletide uh, celebration, whether you do so around this time of year, like on, on the historical reckonings of things, or whether you do it um, around the Christmas time, you know, around that whole area, if you do it around that, it's still an important period of time. I've heard a lot of pagans and I've heard a lot of heathens talk about how the... Uh, the, the, the veil being the thinnest around this time of year. Um, and it is, it's, it's, we, we experience the activity of those who dwell in the spirit realm in that sort of space between the profane and the sacred, you know, they, they, they live in and amongst us and around us. And if you can hear my dogs are barking, I'm sorry, but they are very vocal as well. But, um, the, uh, the activity, that takes place around this time of year, usually between winter nights and 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 Yule, right? Is 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 very powerful. Um, our ancestors, we can we can communicate very closely with our ancestors more easily with our ancestors. Perhaps we can communicate closer with the gods, with the sacred um, this time of year. And uh, so the 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 taking advantage of that sort of thing is 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 important for us. And and as we talk about, you know, people passing on people leaving the flesh and bone and, and blood shells in which they exist right departing from this profane space in their physical form as we talk about that and as it happens around this time of year it's a very fitting thing to talk about because it's a transition as i mentioned it's not the end of the road 
it's a transition. It's you're getting off at an exit and you're moving on to something else. You're, you're getting off the highway and you're moving down those country roads or you're getting off the country roads and you're going down those, you know, <clears throat> uh, country back back roads, the, the, the beaten off the beaten paths sort of thing, you know, getting out of the city and into the country and just whatever analogy that you want to use um, to, 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 to describe it, you get the point. And um, so, right, when, when, when we talk about, like, how close our, our experience is to the gods and to the sacred and to our ancestors, as we talk about that being much more powerful for this time of year, we look to also have uh, a stronger um, experience, we, a, a more in-depth experience with those that pass this time of year. And or near this time of year. So the ones that have already left, the ones that have already gone on, we're we're able to maybe stay connected or, or or be more connected with those at this time when they pass and, and, and during this time. So whether it's, you know, a human being, whether it's a house pet, whether it's an animal um, that, that you have a special connect connection with and connectivity with, um, it's all relevant. It's all important, you know. And especially with regard to the animals, because they, again, they, they, they coexist with us. And, and, and yes, maybe they don't have the same, you know, um, it's not like a person, you know what I mean? A human being person, but quite often, man, like you can, you can get really, you can get closer to, to some animal. They used to, I, you know, I've said, and I've heard a lot of people say to myself sometimes, and I, you know, they they hold better company than some people. You know, because they they listen, they 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 are empathetic, they they love you for who you are, and then they're, you know, um, there's no malice, there's no hate with them. They just it's just love, and especially when we call, talk about like house pets, and this is probably going to venture into some of the UPG um, type stuff, but I'm going to refer to some things. I'm going to read some things actually to you guys that. Um, I'll, I'll leave in the show notes or the description for you to read yourselves at your own pace. But uh, with regard to the philia and some of the historical um, information or whatever that we have about what that meant to the Germanic peoples and the, and the Norse uh, societies or the Norse, um, you know, people from Scandinavia about what that is. What is what, is, what are the philia? Who are the philia? What does philia mean? That sort of thing. Um, but, you know, they, they, they coexist with us they and they they share in our space they, they they share our existence we live with them they live with us and they are oftentimes like when we talk about pets house pets right they are dependent on us to to feed them to give them shelter to make sure they are you know kept clean happy healthy you know all these sorts of things so there's you know as much as we give to them to ensure that their quality of life is as best as it could possibly be that we can provide, you know, how they gift that back to us, how they reciprocate to us many times is through the things like we're talking about that love that, 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 un that, you know, <clears throat> just pure, pure love or in other ways, like we're talking about with uh, my Godi's uh, cat, her, her, you know, she's a, she's a feline. And, and, and she was very present during ritual moments and spiritual moments and things that, that touched on the sacred and in the spirit realm, you know? So in those ways, you know, the fact that she had shelter, she, she had a home, she had food, she had love and care provided to her. It was like, you know, this is her way of saying thank you and, and gifting back to the source that provides her with these things. And I also, um, want to just call attention to, you know, one thing that happened um, during a very important and pivotal moment in uh, my Gothi's life where, you know, he was transitioning from one uh, lifestyle of an existence and a relationship to, into something else and into being sort of, sing, you know, being single and not having that relationship anymore. And, and little kitty, the cat, right, she was present for that. And then the only time, the only time in, in the 15 years that uh, he, you know, that they shared existence together. The only time that she ever killed another animal, um, like, a, like a cat would for hunting and whatever. The only time that that ever happened was when, you know, basically the day that it was on paper, right? Like 
done with this marriage. I'm, I'm moving into a different part of my life. She killed a bird and presented it um, to him. And it was very, it was like, it was a, it was a moment that was like, you know, almost like she was saying, you know, dad, I, I'm, I'm here with you now. It's we're, you know, we're moving in from one stage to the other, that, that part of things are, is dead now, but I'm here and I'm, I'm bringing this gift to you to let you know that I'm here for you and I'm going to be here with you. And that's how it felt for him, you know, and that's how he described it to me uh, in, 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 loose terms i said not not verbatim but yeah like that's that's how it was for him you know that she was there for him at, at that moment uh of, of his life where he had nobody else or the person that he thought he was going to be with the rest of his life was now not going to be and who did he have he had you know little kitty of course his child you know um you're not taking away from her at all by any means. Love you, Kaya. <laughs> but little Kitty is is has been there with him, you know. And uh, losing her now, you know, and and having her move on, um, and leave her physical body and leave her, leave her physical shell is such a, you know, impactful and and hurtful time. You know that that let's face it. You know when 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 you connect. Uh, with your pets like this, when you have them for that amount of time, you know, even if it's just for a few years, when you talk about decades or more of time, you know, she was with him for 15 years. You know, I don't know that many people in my life that I've known for that period of time, aside from my family, like my mother, my father, my sister, and, 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 and some of my relatives, right? There are very few people, humans in my life that I can say that I've known for that amount of time. And, um, you know, so you do, you build up a strong bond with them and they build a strong bond with you and, uh, losing them. It's, it's a, it's a loss. It's a loss felt a true loss felt, you know, and, and I was <clears throat> talking with, uh, with, with Dingo, with my go the earlier, um, kind of in a group chat that we all have. And, you know, this is a loss for the tribe and it is, it, it really is because, and that's that's what tribe is about you know when, when when you celebrate victories when you celebrate success it is a success that the whole tribe can celebrate together and in the same token when loss is felt by an individual or by a family within the tribe that loss is felt across the tribal unit across the board Maybe felt different ways, but it is still felt because your pain is my pain. Your love, your success, your joy, your victory is mine. And we share in all of that together. It's kind of where the the complexities of Frith come in. You know what I mean? Like we're we're oath bound through Frith. And and so therefore, you know, when one suffers, all the members suffer. When one is joyful, all the members are joyful. Um, and that's the beauty of it all. So I will, um, I do want to, since we've talked about this portion of things for a while and, I, and I've brought up kind of the feelings of it all, I did want to, you know, talk a bit and, and read to you guys um, an article that was written on uh, heathenhof.com about five years ago or so. Um, and it's about the philia. So I'm going to link it in the show notes. I'm going to link it in the description. You guys can read it along as you, if you, if you so choose at your convenience, it'll be there. Um, but for anybody that's just, you know, wanting to know what is he talking about uh, with the philia, um, this is it. This is, this is what I'm referring to um, about, you know, the philia. So the article goes on and this is what is a philia? A philia is one of two things. The animal's shape that a person's spirit takes when he or she journeys or a semi autonomous human shaped entity who is attached to a person's soul. Both types have strong connections with a person's ancestral line and can represent or work on behalf of an entire family. So that's what Ophelia is. What Ophelia isn't, um, is it's not a quote unquote Norse totem animal, right? Philia is a distinctly Norse concept that bears 
very little resemblance to the like stereotypical Native American or other cultural concepts of an animal totem. The uh, author of the article is referring to Native American concepts. I know that animal totems rep are, are seen across multiple indigenous cultures across the world, but we'll just stick with Native American culture for the sake of argument right now. Um, the Norse cultures of the Viking age understood the non-corporeal part of a human being to be very complex. Um, the person had a philia or fetch is another word. They have orlog, orle, uh, which are the tally of deeds, sort of the foundation, the, the, the primal layer uh, upon which one's weird or fate is based or built on. You have hamingya, which is loosely translated as, as luck. Um, hamingya is luck, which, uh, and again, these are just a few of the many parts of the self. Um, that make up the human soul in that in the Norse concept of the, the the parts of self, right? Who we are as human beings, what makes us who we are outside of just what you can see and, and, and stuff like that. So um, because the roles and definitions of the philia and related concepts of uh, things such as the disa or dis or those female ancestral spirits, and Haminya often overlapped and changed over the years. However, it is difficult to give one coherent definition of what a philia is and what one can do. That said, philias or filiur, uh, as the people in Old Norse cultures would have recognized them, are still actively showing up in many people's spiritual practices and lives. The term philia literally means follower um i'm gonna pause for just a second because if you guys go to my video catalogs on youtube for those that are listening if you go to my youtube channel midgard musings and just do a search on my channel for um um the parts of self i'll try to i'll try to annotate some cards along the way for those that are watching and put the uh link to the videos in the description and show notes so you guys have a place to, to go back to and listen or watch. Um, but if it's on, my, it's on my YouTube channel, it's not a podcast, it's on my YouTube channel. So if you want to learn more about these things, you know, I, I did a several video mini series uh, on the channel about you know, the parts of self. So, but what the term philia basically means is follower, as in one who follows, right? So philia, uh, the word and the concept is what later European termed uh, like a witch's fetch or familiar. You notice how philia, familia, familiar, like there's a, there's some etymological, maybe some linguistic connotations there that, that compare. Um, but anyway, a philia is a follower, one who follows. So they can take either an animal or take on even either an animal or a human shape. And if human, it will usually show up as a as they say, a, a, a pretty young woman or an old hag. It's pretty definitive one way or the other, um, you know, which it is. Um, or at least, you know, in one literary case, uh, an old troll woman. So sometimes the philia belongs to an individual and sometimes it belongs to an ancestral line. There's an example of a kin fetch. Um, I think described in some cases. So you can see like where we're talking earlier about, you know, little kitty um, and Dingo and, and him and, and her being a philia or, or his philia or, or inhabiting her body in, in, at times. So <clears throat> again, it can, it can belong to an individual or it can belong to an ancestral line. And if so, the shape of the philia that it takes represents that family. So filier, which is plural, were relatively rare uh, in Old Norse times. Usually, only a prominent hero, a king perhaps, or 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 uh, somebody else important in society, like a volva or a witch, priestess, something like that, would have one version or the other. They were not too commonplace among the common folk, at least in the literary sources. A family of 
uh, berserkers perhaps might have a wolf as their philia or bear, right? They may take on the shape of a wolf when they go berserk. Um, those who would practice or, or have that, that practice of shape-shifting, um, such as wild berserking, were thought to have uh, some sort of an astral body called a hammer. I mentioned the hammer in one of my videos on the concept of the self, the, the complexities of the parts of self. Hammer is one of them. Um, the hammer is like an underlying portion of their physical self, um, which when they berserked uh, could take the form of an air of their family animal. Um, we don't know of any instances in the lore, at least from the point of view of this author and to my knowledge at this point, at least where a person had both a human shaped and an animal shaped philia. It was usually one or the other. And then again, the lore that we know of where these things are mentioned refer to one or the other, not both. So a philia usually carried out several roles dependent on the form that it takes. It, <laughs> if it was an animal shaped, it has, uh, or if it, is, if it was animal shaped, it is the shape that one's soul, when the person uh, has left their body, for example, doing any sort of shamanic uh, type journeying, you know, astral projection, leaving the body, traveling to other realms. The the, the form of the person uh, would be vi would be visible or seen in those places at, in the form of that philia. So it makes sense that with Dingo him doing ritual work and, and spiritual. Uh, religious activities in his in his abode in his home in his place and so and so forth that little kitty would want to be there with him for that as being the one to sort of take on his astral projected form or his shape shifted form and, and be that follower that you know familiar as it were um accounts in the lore tell of a person's philia uh showing up in the real world in their animal form far from where the person's body, body actually was, indicating that the philia's owner was trying to send a message or help out in some way. Um, and the philia can appear in dreams as well. Okay, so a philia can also take a human shape, as we mentioned prior, it's one or the other, not both at the same time. Uh, but one way that a human philia is represented is as a protector or either a specific hero or of, his, of that person's entire family line. The other role Ophelia can take is to warn a person of their approaching death or prophesying the deaths of those in their family. Either way, the human philia appears to be, uh, be given, or, or sorry, the, 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 uh, the human philia appears to a given hero, and he or she must then choose to accept that philia in their life. And if he doesn't, or she doesn't accept the philia. There's a there's a case in um, uh, Halfreder saga. Uh, then that philia must go on on a like a like, like you've been put on the bench, kind of like on a hiatus in a way, and wait for someone else in the family to accept them. Uh, though the philia appears to know a hero's fate, she does not seem to be able to directly change it though she can influence the hero to act in one way or another. And one example in the Vatans de la Saga, a hero's uh, uh, philia will cause him to get sick and thereby avoid attending an event which might have gotten them killed. Still, there is no actually escaping one set fate. Like I mentioned before, the moment or the day of our death is set, of our fate is set, and none can escape it. What the Norns have decided and decreed will happen. Uh, in a handful of instances, philias, both human and animal, appear to be wise and work on behalf of the human who they are attracted to. The human version of the philia can sometimes overlap in form and function with certain uh, Valkyries who become romantically attached to a specific hero and or their family line. The version of a philia likely helped to give rise to the concept of fetch wife or a swan wife uh, could be why we see the valkyries uh, portrayed in, in the lore artistically with you know swan wings and, and 
uh, that sort of st stuff. Um, because a good example of a fetch wife slash Valkyrie comes from one of the three, uh, or comes from the three <clears throat> Helgi poems, or in the sagas of Helga Vida Hungasvana. Helgi was a, a hero who dies and appears to be reincarnated three times. And each time uh, his Valkyrie or fetch wife is reborn with him um, through though each time with a different name, Svana, Sigrun and Kara respectively. Uh, in each of these Helgi poems, the Valkyrie fetch wife becomes the hero's wife and protects him in battle. Um, but she ultimately cannot keep him from his, you know, Im impending doom. So some modern representations of the filia. Um, concepts of Ophelia can be a hard one for like modern minds to, to kind of really grasp. Um, an entity that has its own distinct shape and personality and yet is ex in inextricably woven into an individual's family or soul seems quite I guess, bizarre in, in, in most uh, modern day um, culture or in modern, modern times. But in a way to help like <clears throat> understand that a bit, um, you can look at some pop culture uh, as, as few examples of these types of characters. So in an aspect of ancestral family philia, uh, if you're a fan of the Harry Potter series, you'll see similarities of this with the uh, Patronus spell. So Ophelia may well be described as a sentient Patronus, as with uh, the Philia, and the Patronus spell takes on a shape representative of that individual or family, um, and it protects the one who casts that spell and appears when danger is at hand. Another good example from pop culture that... Uh, uh, this time, like in an individual versus an ancestral or family line philia. So we have look for an example of an individual's philia um, are the quote unquote demons from uh, Philip Pullman's Dark Materials series. For, so for any Dark Materials fans, which which I have no knowledge whatsoever, I'm just reading off of this article. Um, there's evidently some connotations or, or correlations to the Norse concept of philia in, in that. So these are, again, semi-autonomous animal-shaped spirits whose form is directly shaped by the personality of the human with whom they are partnered, all right? So that, 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 that covers the article. Now, there, there's more information out there. Like I said, if you check out uh, some of what I put on my channel, um, that information will be shared in the show notes of this podcast as well as the description of the video. For you all to check out because i cover you know the concept of the self the 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 uh the idea of the self the the complexities of the self but um i feel like it's a great thing to talk about right now especially leading up to the uh yule feast that we are all going to be having here in our tribe um by the end of this week and uh the week of the 15th and for anyone that has, you know, experienced loss already this time of year, um, leading up to the, the end of 2021 and the beginning of 2022, you know, there's, there's plenty of people that I've lost in my life. My wife has lost my, my tribe brothers and sisters have lost, um, this year and had have felt that loss. Um, it's not the end. And we were talking um, amongst our tribe a bit about, you know, the, the upcoming Yule uh, celebrations and, and, and sort of the, some of the things that we want to do. And it, and it occurred to um, some of us, uh, and it was brought to my attention, that uh, a special attention to the goddess or the Jotunness, right, the Jotun Hel, the Norse um, figure, Hel, who presides over Helheim. The, uh, the, 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 that some special attention to hell should be uh, should be given because she holds those who've gone on right. She she's presides over Helheim, which for um, 
for anyone that's not, you know, aware of like the, 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 the afterlife, the, the concept of the afterlife, like hell is the grave. Hell is the, the grave mound. It is where all of the dead go. Um, I'm not going to get into the complexities of halls of gods and Valhalla and all that other stuff, but suffice it to say that hell is where the dead go and hell is the, the, the one who presides over obviously her, the, the name of, of her, the place of her namesake, right? Helheim. Um, and so the, 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 the dead are there resting. The dead are there living in their way. Um, the physical dead have gone on and they've moved into to hell. And, and so she is their host. She is their kind of sort of like caretaker in a way. And it's, um, I think appropriate to think about honoring hell or paying homage to hell uh, during Yule, whether it be through a specific bloat or whether it be during bloat to the gods that a special hail is given to hell. Um, think about that, you know, think about incorporating hell in uh, maybe a future Yule bloat uh, amongst yourselves or with your people. It's something that I never really put too much great thought into, um, but having faced so much loss recently and and where some of my loved ones and, and the loved ones of my people have 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 felt those losses she is taking care of them she is she is giving them a place of rest amongst their ancestors and amongst the hall of their ancestors at least in our worldview you know so why not why wouldn't we re recognize her and it's interesting too if you think about you know, transitioning from one realm to the next, transitioning from one plane, from the sacred, from the profane to the sacred, or, you know, within the profane into the spirit realm. There's all these talks about transitions and, and how the veil is thinnest and the veil is, is on one side of things or the other. And if you, and if you read the description of hell's appearance in the lore, as she is, you know, one side is, is as, as the living and the other side is of her is as blue as a corpse. And in most artistic representations that's like a uh, a representation like it the way it's represented artistically is literally half of her face looks and appears as that of a corpse whereas the other half appears as that of the living so there's that transition there's that there's that separation between the living and the, and the dead the physical living and the physical dead that um she is described as as looking like right and so where we talk when we're talking about all these things everything just really ties in well i feel and, and we're going to be looking at that uh in our upcoming you know yule bloat and uh having hell a part of it and i know you know a lot of folks um who are especially drawn to the uh the jotun uh line you know especially those that are that are followers or have a big uh attention drawn to folk to, to like loki um, are also drawn to Loki's children, you know, so Angaborda as, as his wife and, and, and uh, you know, Fenrir and Jormungandr and Hel, of course, being another one. But, um, <clears throat> you know, it's something to think about, man. Like, it's something really to, to ponder. And I like to put these little thoughts out as I get them and as, they, as they're given to me, as those seeds are planted, I like to, you know, put these little giblets out here for you guys to to gnaw on and think about so um yeah i think that pretty well sums up today's podcast i don't uh keep track of these solo podcasts for like time but i think we've um i think we've gone on for at least close to an hour now at this point so we'll just we'll, we'll call it We'll call it, I'll, or I will. Um, I'm sipping on a blended scotch that I haven't had in a really long time. And it's mainly because I haven't, like most of what I get, the, the blended scotch that I get, it's like when I find, like, you know, I, I stick to one thing and I, and, I, and, I, and I don't really venture off into it. But this is one, it's called McIver. Used to be one that I would get quite often. I don't see it much anymore for some reason. And I just... Happened to be at a, uh, a local liquor store that um, I uh, I frequent. It's, it's, you know, 
locally owned and operated. Um, great fella. Name is uh, Vishal. We call him, uh, he, he, he goes by VP. So shout out to VP over here at the Georgetown Liquors in Murfreesboro, Tennessee for stocking McIver. It's a, it's just a blended scotch. There's nothing fancy, you know I mean? If you like, if you get into like things like Cuddy Sark and then, you know, Doers is like a little bit of the mid shelf, the mid range blended scotch. But like, look, if I'm going to just get blended scotch, I'm not looking to like have a, a, a mind blowing experience. I'm just looking to enjoy a drink, you know, um, or two or three or nine, depending on the day. <laughs> drink responsibly, kids don't drink and drive um, and all that fun stuff. Don't don't be an idiot. But anyway, MacGyver is one of those, along with Clan McGregor, that I just, you know, we all have our favorites. Like we all have our go to thing that when we are looking just to, for that everyday sort of drink, you know, some of it, some of you guys, you know, it might be Jack Daniels. Some of you might be Evan Williams. For some, you know, it might be a little bit higher end, you know. But uh, for me right now, right, I mean, I just, I get along just fine with, uh, you know, an inexpensive, decent, blend, you know, blended scotch. I don't need, I don't need the single malt stuff in my day-to-day. -day. I can't afford it, even if I did like it. Now, I do keep the single malts a bit longer, Um We'll be picking up another one for Yule here uh, coming up. But anyway, I rambled on enough, I think, about Little Kitty, about the Philia, um, about now just that random thing about blended scotches. And, um, and Hell, you know, and uh, the afterlife and the concepts of the self, the concept of the soul and, and all this kind of thing. So you guys check it out, check out the, the show notes, check out the description area for, uh, for, you know, what we were talking about today. And uh, let me know, let me know what you guys think right into the podcast, Midgard Musings, TN at gmail.com. Call in to the hotline, 615-671-9832. It's always open. Even if you just be like, I think your podcast is gnarly or I hate it or here's an idea, here's something to talk about, here's something to think about, just call in, leave a voicemail. I want to feature your voice on this podcast. If you guys didn't know already, the link tree link that's posted uh, in all the show notes of these episodes and, and down in the description, wherever, you know, I've got merchandise. It's on a spring store. You guys can get some neat digs, right? Some neat shirts, sweaters, uh, hoodies, I don't know, whatever. There's all kinds of neat stuff. They're just... Head down into the thing and click the link tree link. Head down over there, wherever link tree uh, link or wherever it's at. Um, check out the Midgard Music Store um, and see if there's anything out there that that you like. Of course, you know everything that you buy portion of it goes to help support the podcast. And um, yeah, I'd say that that pretty well wraps things up for today we'll see what's going on next week we'll see who we get on here possibly who knows still looking for uh filling in some guest slots you know for the beginning of this year but as it as it stands right now um we're just uh we're just out here just doing the damn thing so i want to say thank you all uh once again for supporting uh midgard musings and supporting the random heathen ramblings podcast and wherever it is that you're listening from whatever platform you're listening on if you can uh, be sure to support the podcast in any way, whether it's an upvote, a like, a follow, a share. Um, get the get the uh, algorithms to recognize that this is your weekly heathen podcast that you want to listen to and be entertained with and uh, share around. So I appreciate all of your support. It is greatly appreciated that I have this kind of audience to share things with. So thank you all once again. Hail. And until we talk again, may the gods and your ancestors continue to walk with you.